And now it's time to take a look at what's going on around the world in a segment we call Meanwhile In. Meanwhile, in the Vatican City, it has been revealed that there is apparently a secret set of rules governing what happens when a priest fathers a child, which I probably don't need to tell you is totally against the rules. They're supposed to be celibate, but a Vatican spokesman said, I can confirm that guidelines exist. It is a document for internal use and the actual specifics of what are inside of it entirely secret at this point. Um, but it is important because uh, Catholic priests are required to maintain a life of celibacy, refraining from any sexual activity of which fathering children is of course a part. Um, but there's all these sexual abuse scandals obviously. And so that is starting to make some people think that maybe that policy needs to change. And if they've already been dealing with a bunch of it throughout their history, that might make it a little bit more likely that some sort of reform would actually come. I'm not sure if they really believe what they're preaching. I think that there's a chance that that's not the case. <laughs> um, less church and more business. Yeah, cover up your tracks. I get that there's arguments to be made, but it seems like it's sort of going against uh, human nature. And I, I would say that the sheer number of scandals that have come about imply that the damage that is done seems far surpassing any even hypothetical uh, positives. Uh, I've saw one group track down 50,000 children of priests in 175 <sighs> countries. And this apparently the rules do encourage priests who father children to step down from the priesthood and take care of their children. Although I'm sure there's many cases where that does not happen. The effort that goes into covering up or making sure this doesn't get to where it needs to be as far as information or for everyone to know, it, I, I assume um, it's far greater of an effort than just doing something about it in the first place. Yeah. To halt it or maybe have a different approach. Tradition is powerful, people don't wanna change. But meanwhile in. Meanwhile, in Japan, they apparently nominated Donald Trump for a Nobel Peace Prize. This was revealed last Friday by Trump, who said, I think I can say this. Prime Minister Abe of Japan gave me the most beautiful copy of a letter that he sent to the people who give out a thing called the Nobel Prize. I've never heard of it, sounds great. He said, I have nominated you or respectfully on behalf of Japan. I'm asking them to give you the Nobel Peace Prize. I said, thank you, <laughs> and I saw this and thought, why are they nominating him for a Nobel Peace Prize? Is it possible that, that they know something that we don't, that they understand his foreign policy on a deeper level, that they really get how he's trying to benefit the world? Is it possible? No, he asked them to do it, it turns out. Yes, according to sources, the US government asked Tokyo to nominate Trump, which is the saddest thing since a kid in elementary school asking for people to start calling him by a nickname he likes. <laughs> it is the presidential equivalent of that, call me T-Bone. This is basically that. <laughs> it, it totally is. And when I first heard it, I was like, oh, I'm gonna gloss this over because I remember early in the presidency, uh, this guy's presidency, they talked about how foreign leaders, there was like a, a, a report out on how to talk to Trump. It says, butter him up, mm -hmm. make him think you love him, just overdo it, and he's gonna do whatever you want. And I was like, 100%. man, this is the approach, right? But then it's gotten even worse. That's at least, there's some kind of like, scheming involved to get under the good side of the presence. You can use them whichever way you want to, which also happens. But on top of that, then it goes to him asking for it. And then complained after that quote, he complained. Obama got one 15 seconds after being in office. He Thank didn't you. know what he was here for. That is the only thing that this is about. It kills Donald Trump that Barack Obama has a Nobel Peace Prize and he doesn't. So he is willing to go to these humiliating lengths of saying, please nominate me for this thing that I have no call for. Uh, that is what this is about. Um, but that's going on, there's more going on in Nerd Town. Meanwhile in. Meanwhile, in France, and this is a fun one, the French Fencing Federation has recognized lightsaber fencing as an official sport. I think, I think we have a shot of it that we can show. And you're seeing there, it looks exactly like you'd expect. And I know what you're thinking, that looks awesome. <laughs> and you're thinking, why don't we all do this? And that's the thing, I predict that within a year or two we probably will because that looks really fun. Uh, participants are required to use an illuminated weapon, although they'll have to settle for a blade made of polycarbonate rather than the magnetically contained plasma of the films. Uh, while that means that the weapons won't be slicing anyone in half anytime soon, participants will still need to wear masks and armor to protect themselves during matches or long awesome robes. And feel free to fight in both darkness and smoke. That'll make it more exciting too. Is there also a school for this? Is there like, I think I've heard there's, of there's a fencing school, obviously, there's fencing schools everywhere. It's like one close to us, actually. Yeah, is there a school that like teaches people the correct way to 
saber, lightsaber fight? Well, I if think- If not, you should open one. It, the, we don't have much time. So the important thing that you know is that there is not one correct way to lightsaber fight. There are actually a number of different lightsaber fighting styles, I think nine, each having certain advantages. Some are more defensive, some more offensive, some more acrobatic. In future episodes of The Damage Report, I will break down every one of those styles like, of I, lightsaber fencing. I feel like you're making this up. No, it's true, it's 100% true. It's canon, look it up. Anyway, that's what's going on around the world. Thank you, JR, for joining us on the show. Always good to have you on. No, it just ruined it, the day's over. Nope, sorry. I'm, I'm going okay. home. I'm gonna tell you about them, Vapid's my favorite. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.